Good evening and welcome to The Takeaway. My name is Komoto Matsunyane. We're going to be talking about the takeaway of the events that took place at the Women Deliver Conference 2019 today and touching on aspects that happened yesterday. And joining me in studio is Tembisa Fakute from Al Jazeera and um, Justice Baidu from Joy TV, as well as the inimitable and incredibly impressive Natasha Mwansa. Welcome. Be here. So, um, Tembisa, you've, it's been two days now that we have been at the conference. What did you attend today? What were the highlights and some of the sessions that really had an impact on you today? Well, today I decided to spend time at the um, FUEL, which is also known as an, well, it's an exhibition center, but called FUELing um, at the Women Deliver Conference 2019. And what impressed me the most were the innovation and the products that are available uh, to women and uh, very impressive um, something that I've things that I've never seen before um, I went around looking at uh, new the petting systems and products that are available I saw something for the first time called a cup uh, the menstrual cup menstrual menstrual cup mm -hmm. which is was very very um, uh, impressive and I also visited a number of stalls um, just trying to educate myself because in such gatherings you often um, you know, neglect the the stalls and the exhibitions that uh, accompany the the conference and there's a lot to learn uh, from from the so I spent uh, quite uh, time today looking at uh, all the products that are available and exhibited at this conference. Uh, and what uh, about the size? It's quite impressive. I mean, there's quite a well, lot of exhibitors, yeah. different governments and uh, different um, organizations that are represented. Sure, everyone is here. I mean, it's uh, all companies that are involved with uh, women and, and, and girls, um, reproductive kind of rights and uh, health are represented here. Mm -hmm. So that's quite, quite impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see women running the show yeah. uh, at these stalls, um, a lot of innovators are here, managers and directors, most of whom are women from these companies. It's also very impressive. So that's what I've been doing. And of course, while I was doing that, I got a chance to, to, to chill uh, at the foiling area. And I saw a lot of celebrities coming in, including uh, Mrs. Uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, who was also Ill here earlier on giving some uh, autographs and all of that. So it was quite a, for me, that was my day. Mm. And that was a, a, the take I had this. Uh, this that was your takeaway. That was my What take about away. you, uh, Justice? What were the big highlights for you um, at the Women Deliver Conference this year? Well, I think uh, for me, it's even more special because um, Women Deliver today has been the biggest trending issue in Ghana. Um, on social media in Ghana because uh, obviously our president was uh, one of the people on the panel who opened the, the conference yesterday and the, the lot of issues that, that, that came out, uh, out, out of that, that plenary. Um, so everybody uh, was on social media discussing um, um, what the president said and actually all the things that had been said at, at the plenary. And so um, I've been up from about 3 a.m doing um, um, live interviews um, over via Skype for uh, our, our news broadcasts and then um, all through today, um, interviewing some of the delegates from Ghana, but then also from um, other parts of the continent on, 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 on what they make of the, the discussions that, that, that went on, especially at the opening yesterday. So yes, it's been um, quite busy, and yes, it, that, that's, that's, that's what I've been up to. Today. And what is the mood of the people in Ghana? What are they talking about? Are they impressed with the president? Are they not impressed? Where do they stand when it comes to the opinion of your president's participation in Women Deliver? I think opinions are divided, and, and it's, it, there's, a, there's a history to this because um, the issue of gender and feminism um, over the last one or two years is one that has stirred a lot of controversy. Um, uh, people seem to have taken and trained positions on what the way to go. Um, people feel that um, the gender um, narrative has become um, more radical than it should be, um, whereas people who are also involved in the advocacy think that um, the old way of doing things haven't yielded the result that they feel should be. And so over the last two years, we've had a lot, of, a lot more voices 
um, coming in, in in traditional media, but then also on social media to to sort of um, to add their voices on what they think is 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 is, is the unfairness um, that women are made to go through, and and it's partly because um, <laughs> Ghana, in many ways, is a shining example in democracy, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, in human rights, um, and all of that. But then, shamefully, or maybe for want of a better word, we haven't done so well in the area of giving women um, room to, to take part in, 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 in national life, um, to, to, to develop to their fullest potential. Um, and so, yes, people um, have rightly had issues to talk about. And so our president's um, um, comments yesterday um, sort of only deepened the controversy. Um, and, 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 and it's been Which a back and in forth. Particular, if you could give us context. Please. So, so, so the, there's, a, there's a school of thought that thinks that the president said, um, spoke a hard truth that had to be said something that really had to be said, um, which is that women, we, we've had this advocacy for years, and the unfortunate thing is that we keep talking about it, but then we haven't had women in the most um, critical of places um, where decisions um, that would affect the lives of all of us, but most importantly, women themselves, are made. So, for example, we have elections at just assembly le le level and all of that. And we, we don't see that sort of enthusiasm um, for women to take part in those activities. Mm. People think that it is dirty. It is something that is meant for strong men to do. And so um, women are laid back. There's also the school of thought, which also s says that, look, it is these structural impediments that have been put in the way of women um, that have... Um, created these difficulties, which then makes it impossible for women to take part in this process. And then what happens is the ripple effect, which is that we do not give women the chance to, to develop to their fullest potential and the country uh, suffers for it. So um, it is really hoped that we would come to some form of consensus because really for a country like Ghana, we should be doing more than having um, less than say what about 30% in our, our, our national cabinet and not just political representation, sure. really across the board in terms of our national life as a country. Well, your president shared the stage with a rather impressive young person who's sitting with us. But um, I wanted to introduce um, Natasha. Before I ask you a question, Natasha, I want to, for us to reflect and for all of those, of course, viewing this clip to be able to see um, what Natasha did on stage when she was sitting with heads of state. Here's Natasha at yesterday's opening plenary. I'm just going to go right into it. Um, can I stand? I feel more powerful when I stand. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> key message is really that I have for every leader that's out here today. Do not do anything without us, for us, because one, we need young people in key positions of power. There's no way that you can be making decisions, like she mentioned, about young people's health, young people's education, young people's this, and then all you do is just let them be beneficiaries. We're not going to be beneficiaries. That's not happening anymore. It's 2019. So... <laughs> and she went on <laughs> to say some other things which may be considered disrespectful, but mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you. You're a powerful young woman. Where, what was it that you wanted, to, uh, the, the key message that you wanted to deliver to the world leaders that you shared the stage with yesterday? Well, um, the key message really, when, when I began the session, the, the, the person, the moderator asked me, do you feel powerful? And I think one of the key messages I really wanted to bring out is first, the power is relative. And then secondly, I wanted to show people that young people are powerful and we're able to influence and make decisions on our own. I mean, that's an 18 year old you just saw on the screen. I'm an 18 year old. And the fact that I could be able to do that and drive change and speak and articulate whatever issues that I have just proves to the world that young people are capable. So for me, it was really a moment not just to tell 
them but to show them that look we know what's going on we know what we want and we do deserve this power because we do have the right to actually influence decisions that are made about us so really my key message was just share power with us because that's what we need that's the only way we're going to have progress and we're going to have change so that was really it just give us the power to influence and let us you know share this power because it's not about them making decisions about us benefiting alone it's about us actually being there from the start to the end so it's really incorporating young people meaningfully by giving us the power to take charge of our lives and you talked about um, young people not just to be considered as beneficiaries mm -hmm. um, but as like what do you mean by that well you know for a very long time young people have just been there and you know we've been eating off the decisions that are made you know the government today can wake up and say oh we're going to take 15% towards the health of young people and we we'll just be there and benefiting from it the government today can say oh we're starting a school feeding program and we'll just be there and sitting down but that's not what we want anymore we want social accountability we want to bridge the gap between what we want and what is provided because it's not enough to assume what the needs of young people are anymore that's not working out clearly and the more that people or governments make decisions about us and they don't really want they, they don't understand what we go through they don't understand the demographics they don't understand us they don't understand what language that we speak but if we are able to interact and have a platform and to tell them what we want and actually plan with them sit down with them and show them the way to go for young people then it will be better that's the only way that we can actually have a driving solution so we don't just want to be there you know like they make the draft and then everything and then we're just here at the end just benefiting no but moving forward we don't know we don't also just want to be asked what do you want and then it ends there no we actually want to be able to tell them what we want and to be part of that process where we actually make that a reality Sure. So it's incorporating us in everything, not just at the end of the process. We don't, we're not going to just enjoy the end products. We want to be there from the start. Can I play devil's advocate? Please do. Um, I'm a researcher, mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've noticed that this trend of young people wanting to get more involved in political processes, etc., is by and large taking place, or it's more amplified in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had a lot of voices of young people wanting to get involved in other developed societies. Mm -hmm. Could it be uh, maybe the reason why we have these louder voices from Africa calling for uh, participation in political processes, could it be because of the political failures of governments in Africa? Um, and are young people not afraid of the trappings of power? Uh, and there's also a challenge of generalization of certain platforms, particularly within Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand uh, why young people want to get involved, because the governments are, as I've said, alone, failing them. But I think there's also an element of um, impatience and I'm, I'm still playing devil's advocate because, you know, there's, there's a new youth and there's old youth. And given the technologies that we have, chances are Komutsu and I might just live longer. <laughs> and we are going to be competing for a space that belongs to all of us, irrespective of how old we, how old we are. So my suggestion will be perhaps the, the, the manner in which we present this opportunity for young people to get involved has to be articulated in a way that it does not um, it does not kind of alienate potential partners because I'm not quite sure what I'm ready to retire at my age why are you threatened because I would I exactly that's actually what I wanted to ask everything by the way it's it's dev I'm playing yes, devil's, yes, yes. devil's it's, advocate, it's devil's advocate, devil's advocate, <laughs> devil's advocate. Yeah. but what I'm saying is the technology is going to push more and more people are going to live longer uh, and the, the, the agency and impatience of the young people getting wanting to get involved solely and uh, uh, by themselves in pursuing certain political decisions can backfire. Uh, and we've seen, I mean, I, I can't. Don't you think it's worth a try, Timbisa? No, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not. No, 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 okay. Can we, let's try, <laughs> Natasha. I, mean, I think Natasha is <laughs> not going to try okay. to answer this one. You sound exactly. like a typical 
old established no, not. person as you're playing devil's, devil's up, advocate devil's of course not you per se <laughs> your other devil's persona advocate. you are sounding i the more you kept talking as the devil's advocate mm. is the more i keep <laughs> thinking this is exactly why we need to remove the old order because they don't have faith in younger people because it's like it's untested no, I do. we I don't faith. know I what it's like no, i certainly <laughs> have faith um in natasha as well and i think it's a combination of things but i think it's like the same way that women had to make strides and women have to be radical not just burning bras it's not convenient for people to, um, to, to come into power. You can't ask, wait, was it Malcolm X or like um, uh, Martin Luther King who said like, you know, uh, emancipation is something that you demand. Sure. You don't beg for it, you demand it because otherwise it'll never be given to you. But Natasha, yeah. I'm sure you have your own thoughts yes, about I, this. Yes, I would love to comment on, especially the first question that you asked and you're asking why it is, um, why is it that we are more outspoken as Africans as compared to people in the Western world? I believe that's actually one of the major reasons because when you look at the Western world, they are developed and so so automatically you've got systems already that allow young people to interact with their leaders on certain platforms and even if their needs are being provided we definitely have different needs and the fact that those needs are not being granted to us means that we have to step up we can't just be silent simply because um, no everyone else in the Western world is silent we if we have the voice we should do it we should engage and we should actually demand for it so I do believe one of the reasons why many African youths are actually coming out is because we're tired of being oppressed we're tired because we are the majority and yet we are the ones who are having the most oppression, the most silence, the most violence, the most injustice. And yet the older generation has got everything, prosperity, power, this and that. And we are getting the bad vices. So it's now time for us to say, look, we have to change the dynamic. We're not going to be nice anymore. And I just don't believe that for a young person to actually get to where they ought to be, it has to be turned into a political issue or anything like that. I do believe that has a major role to play because there are some countries where their presidents are more, you know, they're more into the idea of young people interacting with them where they're thriving better but then I just don't believe it should be anything that's touched youth engagement youth empowerment women empowerment should be areas like health education these are no go zones politicians shouldn't come and use that as a manifesto and actually win people it should be granted whether or not they put it in their manifesto it should be expected and it should be granted so I just there's so much that's going on in Africa and I just think it's it's really hard for you to compare the two and ask why is it that you guys are caught as speaking up when your friends are not speaking up well they have everything done we don't <laughs> and so we have to speak up because that's the only way we're going to get what we want which answers to your point about the disappointment of exactly. our government um justice what do you want to weigh in on this issue yeah i mean I, I i totally agree with 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 natasha i think that um young people especially in in, in africa have waited for for long Exactly. Um, and especially now with technology and social media and the, the, way, the, the way things are changing so quickly, uh, we, we are learning a lot. Um, and what is happening is we are not having the sort of opportunities to meet the knowledge that we, we are gathering every day. Mm. And that in itself uh, could be a source of frustration. Mm. And so a lot of young people um, feel that how can we live here and not have opportunities to develop our talent, to to grow businesses or start one if we had ideas um, and 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 all of that. So yes, I mean I feel the frustration is 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 there. But I mean it will be interesting to look into what those statistics really say because mm -hmm. I do not think really. It is the case that there is more agitation of young people in Africa than there yeah. is in the Western world. Because, um, I mean, it, what happened yesterday at the hall, we were, um, I was just discussing, I've, I've been discussing with a lot of people, a lot of people from Ghana especially, and I can't imagine um, anywhere in Ghana with a president speaking and people having that sort of pushback that happened mm -hmm. yesterday in the hall. Mm -hmm. It won't happen anyway. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, would so Natasha be able to say that in front of the president or the leadership of Ghana? Really? Really, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know if that could happen in Zambia. Oh, but it, it happens all well, not really all that the time. But could you say that to the Zambian president? Yes, I, I have done it many times. Okay. Ministers, president, I do it all the time. It's okay. just, you, you have to be bold enough to do it. I think that's also another thing, you know, everyone, I had people walking up to me and they were telling me, you know, I cried when you had spoken and I was shocked because I'm looking at them and I'm saying, well, that's, it's, it's, it's typical and, you know, people are asking you, why are you nervous? Why are you this? And I'm thinking mm. to myself, they are just as human as you are. If you don't take the opportunity to tell them what you want at that point, you will never get that again. I, I may never get the opportunity to speak to um, on 
honorable right Trudeau like that ever again. So I use that platform to speak out. So I think also just the fact that you have to be so scared of this man because he's the president. No, he's not in power to oppress you or to scare you or to intimidate you. He's there to serve you. So you have to tell him what you want and then have it granted. No, I, so I, I, just I don't think it's the issue of people necessarily being scared. No, I know it's not. That's it not is the issue. It's just the, the platform itself yeah. also and is also not presented the, to them. The reason I'm saying what I'm saying is the culture, the sort of culture and then yes. the environment within which we live. It's not, as, it's not because people, young people do not know that they need to stand up to people when they are like so political leaders, when they are taking decisions that are not right for them and not right for their future. Um, and I think that we as young people in Africa have lived with all of these shackles for long and, and, and with, with, with the sort of um, knowledge that we have now, um, many of us are eager to break from that sort of, um, th those sort of um, um, hurdles that hold us back. And sure. I think it is what is manifesting in, 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 in some of these um, um, sort of agitations that... I well, I think it's... I, mean, I, 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 I appreciate uh, youth enthusiasm. And I still do believe that I'm young at heart. But partnerships are extremely important. Of course. Um, but they have to be included first. Exactly. Not exactly. Included. Well, I, 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 I agree. Yeah. And mm. I mean, I have to articulate the position of an, an, or an elder <laughs> this round table. <laughs> uh, but partnerships are extremely important. Yes, they are. Uh, and you have partners in people like us who are mm -hmm. might be old, uh, old, old might still be looking young at heart. Uh, young at heart. Yeah. Um, but once we start putting... Uh, an emphasis on things like we're not going to be listening to you anymore, we're going to do it by ourselves, you're going to have a pushback. And the reason why I'm saying so is because I really do feel extremely young mm -hmm. and I do feel that I have time to still participate mm -hmm. in social, political and economic activities of my society. Mm -hmm. And I will compete and probably push back anyone who wants to replace me while I still do believe that I'm relevant to the economy. And what do you economy. think the youth will be doing while you're doing no, this? What I'm that's what I'm saying. We got it. We got to partner. The the the, the, the lifespan, given our technologies, we are most likely, as I said, Aaron, to live longer. So, people are now. We've seen the t t statistics this morning. The lifespan of an ordinary African used to be people used to die at 50. Now they're dying at 60, 70, 80, 90. I mean, if you look at the Americans, they live all the way to 103. So if you want to try and retire me at 45, what's going to happen to my 55 years? <laughs> so we've got to be able to find a way to of living together. Marry, let, you. let us partner, because we've got a lot of people who share your, your views. We want to um. have a, a better Africa, we want to have a prosperous Africa, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. don't antagonize potential alliances mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. some of us, you know, who well. share your views, we want to work with you, but once you start saying, I'm not listening to you, you go to hell, or else we are replacing you. No, this is that's, it. I'm going to live that's, for 60 that's years. Not, that's not it's the message point. we're trying yeah. to preach. I, I do understand that it's a key point, but I think that's yeah. why you misunderstand that, because you misunderstand us, because we're not trying to say, it's not even about articulation. I think it's just about insecurity, really. We're not trying to tell you that we're here to replace you. We're not trying to tell you that you don't know what you're doing. We're not trying to tell you that this is our office. We're trying to tell you that, look, this is old to us. This becomes a right. It becomes important that we actually have this power and that we share it and partnership is important I do agree but then the moment you make it seem as though young people are just here like hey no we know what we're doing we know what's best this and that and we're arrogant and we're rude and we're trying to take over that's where you miss it and that's where we also just become defensive because we also don't want to lose what we have yeah. and so the moment it's 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 always this I don't know where the division is because older people are thinking young people just want to be arrogant and then they we feel younger so people, threatened yeah, Natasha and we younger people are looking at so you and we are feeling as though we can't be involved at all. You, you, no, and I you think underestimate I think it is communication. So there's, and there's, there's that miscommunication. So I do believe that's why I emphasized on dialogue. The more that we actually interact, the more we understand each other's needs. Because that's where partnership actually will begin okay. from. So I it's not totally. it's not us coming up to you and telling you, nah, you're yeah, old, you, you don't, nah. It's, it's not like and that. And even if it's it was, quite frankly, exactly. as a raging feminist, um, <laughs> who's had to fight men and patriarchy. Um, you can't be nice all the time. No, you and can't. And sometimes you have to scream, and sometimes you might even have to throw a bomb. But exactly. Don't retire. Me. Don't retire. Me. You know, why do you feel like you said retiring? I know, but you. what I'm saying is <laughs> exactly the same. What are, this, of course, this is a discussion. Again, devil's advocate, don't retire me. Because we are competing for limited resources, and I still do believe I'm relevant.
and I'm still young at heart, and given the technologies I've said earlier on, chances are I'll live much longer. This devil I mean, is, advocate are. is really arguing I too much for the you, devil. Sorry. If you are young. Just a little too much for the devil. <laughs> yeah. <We're> really <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, can I, I just comment on that? I'm no? gonna let you. I'm gonna give you the finishing touch. So uh, these young two gentlemen, mm. um, I finished speaking, Natasha. <laughs> I'm giving you the last word. You can say whatever you want. Yes, definitely. As, <laughs> long as you want. You've been great guests. Sure. Now keep quiet. <laughs> Please continue, Natasha. You give Thank the final you. word. Thank you. I think also just emphasizing, just to emphasize on what you've been saying about being young at heart and how you don't want to be retired. I, I think you must come to a place where you realize that if you failed, you failed. Then let the younger generation <laughs> take it up and let them show you that they can actually try. I haven't failed. And that's, no, I mean, I think you have because... <laughs> <laughs> because systems are not working out. We are, we are both in the worst and best times because of what's going on around the world. We're in debt, we're in poverty, there's war and all those things. And the more that we the more that we look into it actually, you see that the sort of people that are in power have held it for too long. And that's the sad thing. If we're not ready to embrace new ideas, if we're not ready to embrace younger energy, if we're not ready to utilize the potential that we hold as young people, then we're not ready for progress or change. We're just saying, look, we're doomed to disaster and this is where we want to stick at. And so the message really here is not that we want to come into office and we want to take away the president's power and we want to do this and that. It's just that we want to be heard. We want to show you what we want and we want to be part of the process. We want to be involved from start to the end. And so that's basically what it is about. Thank and you. I love what you mentioned about power. You know, power is not always just going to be given to you at a silver platter. Power is not going to be given to me when I sit on a plenary session with presidents and all those things. That It just ends there. But then what happens afterwards? That's where we actually see the real power. Perfect. So what a conversation. <laughs> Natasha for president. Natasha wow. for president. <laughs> Devil's advocate. Yeah, <laughs> Devil's advocate will always be there. Natasha, thank you so much. Thank for you. Joining thank us you for this wonderful interview. And thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you.